Hello everyone, Mocha Bear here. Welcome back to Mocha Bear's Hobby Den. Today we'll be doing another Kickstarter project unboxing video. Shall we get started? So today's project is another one by Eventier Games, and this one is called Heretic's Guide to Devotion and Divinity 5e. The Ultimate Guide to Divinity in 5e, Relic Hunts, Cults, Celestial Monsters, Divine NPCs, Magic Items, and Player Options. The goal was 5,000 euros, we got it to 123,322, and there were 2,269 backers. Right, so, story, Heretic's Guide. Right away, I love the art that they used for this. Uh, Dangerously Divine. Bless your game with rules and guidelines for everything divine in 5e, including pantheons, ceremonies, divine oaths, and more. Six relic hunts and ten exalted encounters. Five adaptable religious cults. Five plug-and-play divine NPCs. Eight sacred subclasses and new divine feats. Thirty-five plus celestial creatures and other monsters. Thirty-five plus mystical magic items. Divine oaths, boons, and other godly rewards and Pantheon and Cult Generator Roll Tables plus Web App. Most of the time, the Divine feels a little more than an afterthought in 5e. Too easily forgotten or ignored, something only clerics and paladins have a reason to care about. Heretic's Guide to Devotion and Divinity sets that right with 160 plus pages of divinely inspired content aimed at bringing the Divine to life in 5e. Slay a God or become one? Divine Godhood with new rules and guidelines, statistics for gods and their avatars, and new divine player options. Blessings and penitence. Exciting new magic items, divine boons, sacred ceremonies, and celestial monsters. A world of the divine. Enhance your campaign with ready-to-play relic hunts, exalted encounters, religious cults, and new divine NPCs. A divine world may not be better, but it's certainly more interesting. The Heretic. From zealous cults and relic hunts to divine player options and celestial maharars, Heretic's Guide to Devotion and Divinity has everything you need to make the divine actually matter. Don't believe us? O oh, ye of little faith. Check out this 20-page sample and see for yourself. It does still work. Download sample. Click here to download a free 20-page sample, which is the same thing right up there. Um, it, like I said, it does still work. It's very beautiful. Uh, divine Inspiration. Heretic's Guide blesses your game with new rules and inspiration for handling the divine in 5e, including tools to keep track of and expand the traditions, superstitions, and tenets of your world's pantheon. With new religious ceremonies and rituals the heretic has picked up on their adventures, resurrecting a fallen hero or beseeching the gods for guidance becomes exciting encounters all of their own, with immersive role-playing opportunities, dangerous challenges, and mechanical benefits. And with new divine boons and oaths, the GM gains new ways to reward player characters that go beyond the material. Relic Hunts Hidden in deep shadows and protected by deathly traps and puzzles, a god-killing blade awaits a hero brave enough to grasp its hilt, and who is pure-hearted enough to lay claim to the treasure in the Temple of Three Challenges. The Heretic brings you five adaptable relic hunts featuring ruined temples, lost cities, and sacred shrines littered with traps, puzzles, and divine guardians. Complete with VTT-ready maps and tokens, Perfect as one-shot adventures for any 5e campaigns. And then an example um, right there, for the free 20-page sample. This book is looking to be the perfect resource to connect players with the mysticism and divine of our campaign worlds. I can't wait to start using it by Afternoon Maps. Uh, Celestial Foes. Very interesting looking. The 5e Monster Manual contains exactly seven, yes, only seven celestial creatures. And of those seven, there's a slim chance any of them will ever see play. How often are the heroes fighting unicorns and angels after all? The heretic says to all, eh, heaven. With that, and brings you 30 plus new divine monsters to challenge characters at any tier of play. From the forsaken diva or deva to the god blood ooze, these holy horrors all have unique and flavorful mechanics and tactics. Oh, yeah, we almost forgot. Heretic's Guide to Devotion and Divinity will also provide stat blocks for the gods and their avatars because who hasn't dreamt of slaying a god? And I've mentioned before, my two-plus-year campaign I've been running seemed like it was dying, but it might pick up again soon. Um, we'll see what happens. This book will come in handy with it because I have I Frankensteined a stat block together for an avatar of a god in my campaign. 
So we'll see how this works out with that. If it lines up, I might stick with what I have or <laughs> take this out and use it. Religious Relics From the mythical god-killing blade Bedlam to the humble priest's martyr's vow amulet, the heretic presents 30-plus new divinely inspired magic items. Whether blessed by the god of duty to bestow fearsome powers to brave heroes or crafted in secrecy in the god of darkness's shadows forge, all these religious relics have unique and exciting flavors. Each item is also brought to life with card handouts, either physical or digital, that provide the players with tangible reminders of the powers of their newfound treasures. And then Zell Secrets and Divine NPCs. An angel cast down from heaven to guide or punish the god's mortal followers. An oath binder who can forge divine oaths between deities and devout mortals. A cult of sun worshippers who have taken to the shadows to vanquish anyone who dares blaspheme against their lord. As important as the divine beings they give fealty to, devout followers are at the heart of every religion. Heretic's Guide provides you with the ready-to-play divine NPCs that sell religious relics and provide mystical services, as well as holy cults and zealot sects that can serve as powerful factions or villains in any 5e campaign. Stretch Goals As our funding grows, so do our divine powers, eh, but our ability to stuff more content in the book, we should say. Help us reach our stretch goals, as we'll give you more awesome stuff for your game. Okay, so we were at 123. So, Divine Feats. Feats for player characters to become champions of the gods, perform minor miracles, or enhance their divine powers. Uh, included in all reward tiers. Uh, cheat Sheet. Convenient printable cheat sheets for all NPCs, cults, relic hunts, ceremonies, and sample deities for easy reference at the table. Also in all reward tiers. Divine Dragon plus STL. Awesome Divine Dragon in Wormling, Young, Adult, and Ancient versions plus STL file. Dragon included in all reward tiers, STL file included in STL file add-on. Uh, sacred subclasses. Let your players dive into new divine subclasses for 5e from the Anointed Blade Rogue to the College of Chanting Bard. Included in all reward tiers. Exalted Encounters. Plug and play Exalted Encounters, combat and non-combat, that will bring a divine spark to any session in all reward tiers. Plus one Backer Cult. An additional religious cult decided by our backers, including new NPCs, quest hooks, and more, in all reward tiers. Cult slash god generators. Pantheon slash god and cult slash cultist NPC generators. Rolling tables and web apps to quickly and easily create your own deities and worshippers, in all rewards. Plus five monsters. A handful more unique celestials, divine horrors, and seraphic foes for your 5e game, in all reward tiers. And then, okay, so we got a few more. Plus five magic items, a handful more divinely inspired magic items for your 5e game, blessed relics, evil artifacts, and everything in between, all reward tiers. Plus two subclasses, two additional divine subclasses decided by our backers, a profane monk, a zealous druid, an evangelical barbarian, you choose, in all tiers. And lastly, Plus one cult and relic hunt, an additional religious cult, and another plug-and-play relic hunt that will bring the book's page count to 176 pages. All reward tiers. Uh, rewards. Let's go ahead and check that out. So, PDF, 25 euros. Got you the PDF of the book, and then digital assets, handouts, maps, and tokens. Uh, hardcover and PDF was 45 euros. It also came with the digital handouts, maps, and tokens, so hardcover and PDF of the book. The even tier P, uh, PDF bundle. Uh, okay, so here it says PDF bundle, and here it says digital bundle. But it was the um, PDF of the book and the digital assets. Also gave you Milano's Guide to Magical Marvels, as well as Wanderer's Guide to Merchants and Magic. So it was all the previous projects, which I have done a video for. Um, Milano's Guide to Magical Marvels. And if you want to see how that project looked, a uh, link to that will be in the description box down below for the unboxing. And then uh, 60 euros, we've got the Heretics Core Bundle. Uh, so you got the hardcover of the book, the digital assets as the PDF, the item, boon, and oath handout decks, and then bookmarks with rules and lore. Then we've got the Deluxe Bundle, 110 euros, which I think is the one I went with, yes. Uh, so that gave you the physical hardcover, the digital assets in the PDF, the handout decks, the bookmarks, uh, Sky Ferret and Seer enamel pins, 
uh, the heretic, scribe, and seer STL files, the VTT module for Foundry or Roll20, and uh, so I just looked at their recent update because I forgot uh, the Roll20 has um, version is not completed yet. They're still converting it. They said they're hoping it should be releasing by the end of this month, so we'll see what happens. Um, but then we also got the limited edition wall poster. And then we've got the everything bundle, which was 200. So that gave you the hardcover of uh, Heretic's Guide to Devotion and Divinity, PDF, digital assets, the cards, the pens, the STL files, the bookmarks, the poster, the module for VTT. But it also got you Milano's Guide to Magical Marvels, physical uh, PDF and the assets. It got you the dice set. Um, the Adventure Packs 1, 2, and 3. So it pretty much got you everything that came with my copy of Milano's Guide to Magical Marvels. Um, so again, link to that will be in the description box down below to check out. Yeah. So let's go ahead and scroll back up here. Oh, there was another option of 250 euros where you could make a monster or magic item. So I like it when projects have these additional offers where you can help make something for the project. That's really cool to do. Um, I definitely did not do it because I couldn't afford it. All right, so we're back to there. So this shows you the pledge breakdown, um, the add-ons. So the Adventure Pack 1, Adventure Pack 2 and 3, the bookmarks. You got the 3 for 10 euros. The VTT module is 10. Card deck, 15. Enamel pins, 15. Uh, the previous projects, uh, STL files, posters. Uh, yeah, and again, previous projects right there for their bundles. Uh, the shipping and VAT. Uh, here's the thing for their uh, even tier games. Uh, even tier means adventure, and that's what we're all about. Making 5e adventures easy and fun for both players and GMs. As an indie publisher from cozy little Denmark, we're not the biggest TTRPG company, but our track record doesn't lie. We are proud of our reputation as a provider of high quality TTRPG resources and won't do anything to compromise it. So I definitely support this company and as long as I am financially able to, I will continue to back more of their projects in the future for sure. Uh, you've got J.A. Valure, the Jack of All Trades and founder of Eventier Games, uh, S.K. Valure, Valure, fart, pardon me. Uh, creative engine cheerleader and co-founder of Eventier Games, Lydia Hodgins, organizational wonderkind and general keyboard gremlin. Uh, you are the project coordinator for Eventier Games, okay? Uh, Kathleen Harrington, word herder. Uh, you are the editor of Heretic's Guide of Devotion and Divinity. And then we've got awesome artists. Uh, will feature human-made art exclusively, and that is important because a lot of People are big fans of AI art, and yeah, it's cool, but it is taking away people's jobs, and some people are even trying to fake it as their own. Uh, one person I follow, Dwarven Dad, he just recently had someone try to pass off AI art for their own to sell to him that he, uh, as a commission. Definitely gotta support your artists, people. And as much original commissioned art as we can possibly afford, art addiction is a real thing. Yes, it is. We work with amazingly talented artists, including... Okay, so please forgive me for butchering these names. If anyone knows how to pronounce them, or if any of you are watching this, please correct me in the comments down below. Uh, Eugenio Frosselli, Frosselli uh, Mariana Lavrace, Lavras, Nana Landholt-Peterson, uh, Kiko Vicens Picato, or Vickens Picato, Picato? And Claher, Claher, Backlaher, Backlaher. Please correct me down in the comments down below on how to pronounce it. Uh, then here you have the website link, their Patreon, YouTube, Discord, and Twitter. Um, so their website, YouTube, and Twitter links will be added to the description box down below. I can't remember if they have an Instagram. If it is, I will. But uh, link to this Kickstarter project page will be in the description down below as well. So. You can access them all from there as well. Uh, risks and challenges. Okay, so without further ado, here it is. Let's get our box opening tool. All right. Let's see here. 
Oh, I see the pin. Yo. Right, so, that is really cool. Turn it away from the light. That's not going to help. Oh, well. Yeah, that is really nice. I've got a lot of pins now. Uh, a friend of mine, Little Sith, she's given me um, a couple pins. I've got some other pins from other things from my previous stop of the game uh, life that I need to put on something. Those are nice looking pins. In fact, let me set it over here so I can put it back in there. All right, what we got here? Ah, the bookmarks. So I'll set that there. Yo, okay. So let's, uh... oh, okay. That's really cool. And they're double sided. Okay, so I'll show you this one first. So this one actually has the conditions printed on it. That is really cool. That is very, very useful. Focus. Come on. You know you want to. There we go. That is really cool. Very, very useful. Even to your games. Whoever came up with the idea of doing that, props. Mad props to you. Um, but then we've got... Uh, okay. So we'll start with the cover art one. It's got Divine Boons on both sides so okay and then focus on the words I don't know why it's struggling right now well you can read that at least but it's got divine boons on the front and on the back now see now it's wanting to focus and then this one has acts of devotion on this side and then on this side Signs of devotion. I don't know why it doesn't want to focus. There we go. Yeah, that is really cool. And it's a D12 for both. Um, you know what? I've got my dice bag here next to me. My spare dice bag. <laughs> this is full of a bunch of dice. If you watched my uh, Dice Goblin video, then this bag will be very familiar. Okay, here we go. I call this one my uh, my Sherbert uh, die from my Sherbert die set. All right, so we're rolling for signs of devotion. I got an eleven. Cask and barrels used to age ale and spirits are often branded with symbols of the god of nature or fortune to prevent spoilage. That's pretty cool. And what if it was an act of devotion? Winning in a game of chance without giving some of the prize in tribute to the god of fortune is said to bring bad luck. Ooh. Okay, very cool. All right, let's get that out of here. All right, so next up, ah, my cords. We've got the cards, and oh, I love that. It's also double sided. I love that so much. Okay, good. And the cards are in plastic. So, the Amulet of Rationality. So I'll show you how it's designed, featured. I can do a video in the future on these cards, but I love that design on the back. The Vow of Truth, Sacred Vow. I like that a lot. So that is the items and oaths and things like that. Let's get these bookmarks together. And then it's upside down. All right. So... Here is the standard cover of the book. And it is gorgeous. Dangerously divine. It's got the thing that was read on... Uh, let's do it. There we go. Oh, that is so nice. Yeah, I completely forgot that um, I got two of these. Because I also got the limited edition cover. So it's pretty much swapped the images on the front and the back and gave it a gold foil um, font on the front. So that way this can be on the shelf safe. I'm super excited to see this. 
Okay, so we're gonna open this up together. Credit, uh, even tier, attribution statement. It's not official Dungeons and Dragons publication. Yeah. Um, table of contents. Of introduction, chapter one, divinity. Ooh, you got nature of divinity, sample pan uh, pantheons, designing divinity. Chapter two is devotion. So nature of devotion and ways of devotion. Chapter three is character options, which I know everyone's going to be wanting to see. So you've got divine subclasses, college of chanting, chaos domain, exalted knight, way of peace, oath of the templar, spirit guide, anointed blade, and the soul bound. So, and then you've got divine feats, chosen of the gods, and feats of divinity. Uh, chapter four is divine agents. Chapter five, holy quests. Chapter six, divine magic. Chapter seven, creatures. And then you've got creature and item index on page 200. Oh, so uh, look at that. Look at that dragonborn. You all know, if you've been watching my videos, I love artwork and I will continue to say it. I love good artwork. So we've got divinity in your world. So, oh, that's awesome. So the first step to figuring out how divinity functions in your game is to decide how you want divinity to be presented in your game. Do the gods exist? Do mortals believe that the gods exist? Or do they know that the gods exist? These are simple but pivotal questions. Typically, there are four ways to present divinity in a fantasy setting. No divinity, which is there are no gods and nobody believes that there are. Dubious divinity, it is uncertain whether gods actually exist but some mortals believe in them. Assumed divinity, the gods exist and some or most mortals believe in them. And definite divinity, the gods exist and almost all mortals know that they exist. That is awesome. Definitely going to have to do a uh, more in-depth review of this book. I've got so many books I've got to do that for. But um, since I did finish the Dungeons of Dragonheim factions, I will be moving on to Druid's um, Secret of the Primal Circle because uh, there's some stuff in there I want to uh, do. First thing I will do for that book will be uh, my top five creatures from that book as a DM. So five creatures, my top five creatures that I would like to use and think are cool as a DM to throw at your players. One of them I have thrown at some of my players and there's something special alongside it as well. So that video will be coming out probably in the next two weeks. But let's see here. How divine uh, was it? Chapter three, was it? Okay, so you have designing divinity, step-by-step uh, -step base stat blocks. You've got lesser deities, standard deity, and greater deities. Uh, divine enchantments, uh, domain spells for them, uh, divine features. Yo, I'm definitely going to have to do that. I'm, ooh, I might have to make a deity uh, on here for y'all, like do a video on step-by-step -step guide for designing divinity. That will be a fun video to do. Comment down below if you'd like to see me build a divine being on here. The divine subclasses, the Bard College of Chanting. This bardic subclass relies on chants and hymns to provide powerful buffs to your allies or penalize and even harm their foes. Cleric Chaos Domain. This cleric subclass embraces the divine domain of chaos to create wild and random magical effects. Fighter Exalted Knight. This fighter subclass has been blessed with a guardian spirit and follows divine creeds that grant them useful bonuses. Uh, move my head here. Monk Way of Peace. This monk subclass is sworn to peace and vanquishes its foes through admonition and pacification rather than brute force. Paladin Oath of the Templar. This paladin subclass is sworn to protect others from the dangers of magic and is a lethal foe to any spellcaster. Ranger Spirit Guide. This ranger subclass has a deep connection to the spiritual world and can partially or even wholly manifest as a spirit in the mortal world. Okay. Rogue. Anointed Blade. This rogue subclass can bless its weapons and trinkets with holy power and wields divine magic and stealth in equal measure. And lastly, Warlock the Soulbound. This Warlock subclass possesses a soul stone it can use to harvest souls and channel spiritual power. That is awesome. What is, is that a, a cleric? It's a Chaos Domain cleric, I guess. Yeah, that's what it looks like. That looks like something from Ravnica. Like a, um... 
Oh, uh, what are they? Uh, like a um, Cultus of Rakdos. There we go. That's what it is. Here is a Paladin. That is really nice. The Rogue looks sick. Focus. Focus. Is that the best you're going to do? I think that's the best we're going to get. Oh, well. And then here is the Heretic himself. Uh, Cassanthra, a gold dragonborn who specializes in foiling the schemes of deities and their mortal followers. So that's who that is on the back cover of this book. And on the front cover of the limited edition book. Challenge 10. Challenge rating 10. I'll just show you the artwork of the magic items from the first pages here. Hope I got those into focus in the frame for you. So the swords are the same thing. It's bedlam. So the darker version of it is dormant, and the brighter version with the blue is anointed or consecrated. We've got warhammers, diadem, staff. Is that a staff? Yep, staff. Cloaks, incense. We are definitely gonna have to do a a series on magic items and I will start with third party company magic items since most people know or have seen the typical magic items from Wizards of the Coast um, books we will definitely start with third party companies creatures so this page has the creatures listed by challenge rating and it um, has them alphabetical order based on their challenge rating and tells you what type they are. Oh, wow, that is actually really handy. I'll show you what that looks like real, real quick so you see what I'm talking about right here. There we go. Yeah, that is really cool how that's done. That's very useful. Azarfio, the heretic and the scribe are attacked by vindictive Azarfios. Okay, so medium celestial angel, typically lawful evil. Challenge seven, so it can be used a little early on in the camp in the campaigns. But this thing, oh my goodness. It's got multi-attack, spell casting, and then bonus actions. <laughs> Woo! And it's got a reaction. You're also going to see the uh, Kaipora. It's a small fey native to dense forests and jungles and known for its mischievous nature and uncanny ability to blend into its surroundings. It's a small fey. So you're going to see both of those. But this right here is the, how is it pronounced again? Azarfiel. And that's the other thing. The small fay riding the the boar, the pig. And then we've got deities. We've got a god of nature who's the lesser deity. God of darkness is a standard deity. God of order, the greater deity. Yo. Gonna have to definitely do a creatures series as well at some point for all of these books. Hey! The Seraphic Seer. That's what's on the pen. That's what's on this pin right here it's a large celestial typically neutral challenge rating seven there we go oh that's the lesser challenge rating seven the standard one is a challenge rating 12 and then the sky ferret stat block but it doesn't have a picture but i'm guessing that's what that that is right there a sky ferret even tier games, you have not disappointed me. Super excited and happy with this. Definitely going to be beneficial to me with my uh, campaign if it continues. Those of you who are DMs, GMs, storytellers, and you want to run a campaign dealing with the gods or dealing with celestial beings, definitely, definitely want to get this book. A must-have definitely a must have this is the second book that i have done on kickstarter that involves celestials uh i think it was um professor gilroy's heavenly handbook was the first one i did and this is the thumbnail for that and the link to that will be in the description box down below as well both that and this must have i'm excited to get to try this out like i said before all the links will be in the description box down below so you can Take a look at the project page, uh, follow their uh, personal links, and all of that. I can't say this enough. Even Tier Games, thank you so much for this wonderful project. I'm gonna go ahead and end it there, otherwise, I will continue to go on. Please take care of yourselves, and until next time, hobby on.